Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is going to be called Raid Boss. Raid Boss is for two to four players, but you could probably play solo if you wanted to. And it is basically a game in which you're going to be playing as a hero or heroes attempting to fight a raid boss. You guys ever played World of Warcraft or, you know, not Starcraft, any of those other MMOs where you go in and there's the boss, he's doing all of his abilities, and you have to dodge him and go into certain positions and attack with your abilities, and every character is unique in their own way with their own setup. This is like that. You're ignoring all the mobs, you're ignoring all the basic enemies, there's no plebs that you need to fight, you're just simply going to fight the raid boss. The raid boss is going to have a ton of health, a ton of passive abilities, unique cards, changes of phase in which things get harder and stronger and the boss gets angrier, as well as even if you think you've killed the boss, you may not have because you have to deal with his last stand card. If you can get wiped out by losing three characters, then you're going to lose the game. And if you can kill the boss by removing his health to zero and then dodging his last stand without losing three characters you're going to win the game it's fairly simple there's a lot of bosses and a ton of characters to choose from and the game is different each and every time you play let me show you down below what you get and why I think so so here we have the game raid boss and it's basically set up I'm gonna go through all the components with you and I'll talk about setup and then after that we'll go down below and I'll show you how a round or so works and how you're gonna be utilizing your characters and rolling die this game is a sort of Yahtzee feel to it in which the Yahtzee attackers like King of Tokyo and whatnot. It has that basic combat style in it, but it's different in a number of ways. So let's go ahead and start talking about all the stuff first. Bosses. There are a ton of bosses. I believe there's at least six, at least what I have. I chose Vol Vakalankos uh, as one of the bosses. He's got 120 health in two phases, and he's going to have a passive ability. He's going to give bonus dice out as you do damage to him, and, he, and each of the phases will change the number of cards in his deck. Each boss has its own unique deck of easy, medium, and hard mode cards, along with last stand cards. After you've defeated them, they'll do something interesting. Bosses all play differently. Some of them have more than one phase or more than two if there's three phases in some of them some of them are going to have multiple passives this one here is pretty simple it just says the hero in the first position has always plus one weak which means they take one more damage there's a ton of tokens in the game some of them are shields or damage tokens and uh depending on the boss you're using is what you're going to be also using with all of these guys here there are the character die or bonus die which you'll be using for character skill abilities and then all of the decks for all of the bosses in the game there's also i believe about 12 characters 12 hero characters the front shows their abilities they have three of them along with an ultimate and a passive they're going to have some kind of skill bar on one side but of course that's not for every character and a certain amount of health and max hp they all are very very different in the way they play but they are all formulated the same so that you kind of have an idea of how to play each one of them after you've played at least one character standees which you'll be using throughout the game which will simulate their position in the fight and uh these are the positioning boards this is the main board of the game it's going to have the boss deck on one side the discard pile on the other side and then at the start of round uh, tile area here it goes all the way to the end of round so it simulates how to play the game by moving this little tracker all the way down these are each of the player boards here and there's an extra one for some reason or another depending i guess maybe on the boss fight or whether you have another character there's also four positions here the first position and the fourth and that does make a difference in how you take damage throughout the game you're going to be placing your tokens down based on where you want to start and turn will go from the first position all the way to the fourth if a player switches position you're actually going to go ahead and move one of these guys like this and that will change the position of the uh, characters these are character boards all the way down here all four of them are all set up and they have their fate or their armor or their bonus die basically they're all skill sides which are these guys here that move up and down based on how you do throughout the game their hp is down there and it's all filled with markers so it's easy to understand these are your starting player combat die and then this is your skill die, which can be used for certain things. Additionally, each player is going to get two of these tokens, which allow them to re-roll die, and this one here, which will allow you to change a pip from one to two, or two to three, three to four, you get the idea. Those are only once a game uses. Once you've used them, they're gone, so be very careful in how you utilize them. That's pretty much what you're getting in the game. As you can see, quite a lot of stuff here, and uh, Additionally, there's probably going to be even more stuff that can come out with this. You can always imagine that they can add more bosses and add more characters. But that is what you're getting for the game Raid Boss with this here and, of course, the rule book. Let's go ahead and take you down below and I'll show you a basic round of play in which the characters are going to roll and how they're going to fight and how the boss is going to attack. And then my review. So here we have a four player or two player setup for the game Raid Boss. And as you can see, we're fighting against Valkyrakos. 
Uh, he is basically going to have 120 HP. You'll be utilizing these markers for his, uh, his, his first digits and these for his second. It goes from zero all the way to 120. All the plus ones are gonna be bonus die. They're gonna be handed out to players at the end of each of the boss's turns, as well as after he gets past 60 HP, it's gonna go into phase two, in which all of the easy cards get removed and all of the hard cards will be added to the deck and to the face down cards here, making the boss more and more difficult. You'll also have the last stand cards in here, which are gonna have the LS symbol on them. And you're just gonna go ahead and set them just like that. And you'll utilize them when it comes up in the game. Every character has their two white dice to start with and their one black, which is used as the, for their abilities. Every character's health is gonna be at six and their max HP will be in the blue margin. And that might be different depending on the number, the, the number for each player. Like this guy here has more health. Uh, additionally, you're gonna have the ability die that you're going to gain. You'll just move that, to move that marker up all the way up to five. And then you've got your tokens here for rerolls and for increasing your pip count from uh, by plus one. Then every, every character is in the position. Position one, two, three, and four. These are going to reference the characters. If they ever get turned uh, face down, that means they have taken too many wounds, they've went to zero health, and they've been knocked out. If that happens three times, the game is over. And that happens by the tracker going to zero on their health, health tracker. So to begin the game, after we've all set up all of this stuff here, you're gonna go ahead and start with the round start. And that is by shuffling this deck here with the easy and medium cards for this specific boss. And then you're going to go ahead and deal one out to each of the characters in each of the positions marked fairly easily for you to see. After that, you're gonna start with position one, and then you're gonna to go to position two, three, and four, and you'll be taking turns. Uh, there's going to be instant abilities as well as potentially start of turn abilities. So we're going to flip this guy here and that is not an instant. It says boss turn and on the marker here, it says boss turn. That's when this card is going to activate. Some cards, however, are instant effects like this one here. And that, and that was going to happen during the instance phase. So that's going to go ahead and pass to the ability roll. And we're going to be using this character here, which is the Titan character. The Titan character gets two die. And when he goes to roll for his ability rolls, he's going to go ahead and simply roll the two die and then he's going to assign them on the board based on what, it's to get, what he gets. And this is a two and a three, so that means he can use his two ability twice, or he can use his five ability once. He also has some interesting stuff. So for instance, whenever he takes damage, if he has armor, he can roll his armor die. And if that value is equal to the damage taken, he'll lose armor. If it's less than, he'll lose that much armor and reduce that much damage. And if it's more than, he'll gain armor and not take the damage. So armor is very useful for this character. He also gains plus two armor this turn uh, when you're dealt damage by all. So you'll, you basically can block an attack from a boss and gain two, two armor but he can only do that once a round, I should say. And this is going to happen based, based on how he's gonna turn his character over like that to utilize that specific ability. So once every round, he can use that to protect players from taking too much damage. But let's go ahead and move on to just the simple abilities. This one's gonna give him a plus one armor and he can shield a target for two damage. So if he chooses to do that, he can take one of these shield tokens and he's gonna to place it on one of the characters. There's persistent and then there's round effects. So if he wanted to put, give that guy armor, he could go ahead and do that in his round effect area. And then he's gonna give himself plus one armor. He he would then do that again with the three because he doesn't have enough for five. So he can give this person plus two, plus two uh, armor as well as plus one to his armor skill. Uh, and that would be basically his turn. That's what he's chosen to do. Now, if he didn't want to do that, and he said, instead he wanted to do his five ability, that one says that you can deal damage based on your armor, but that would be zero at that time. And then he'd set his armor based on his position. So he'd set his armor to one. So in reality, this would be the best decision for him to do is gaining that two armor as well as giving these two guys some armor to protect them from taking damage. So he'll do that. Uh, after he's done his ability rolls and assigned his abilities like he did, then it's the boss's turn. So we'll move over to the boss's turn. And the boss is going to do three damage and it's dealt two adjacent heroes and then swap this hero to the last position, which is actually not so bad for him. So he's gonna do three damage to adjacent heroes. So this guy here is gonna take three damage and it's gonna be marked on his little tracker here from six to three. And then this hero is gonna be swapped to the last position. So these guys are all gonna slide and this guy is gonna go to the last position. After that is done, you're going to do the end of turn effects and then you're going to move back to the start of turn for the next character. Next character is gonna go ahead and flip over this thing. That is an instant and it says to roll a D6. So we'll go ahead and take a D6 and roll it. I'll just use this guy here. 
and it says lose one max HP and take four damage, and it's going to be for this character here. So if this character wants, which he does want to do, he's going to go ahead and flip this to the side. He can then gain two armor, going to four, and then he's dealt all the damage the boss would normally deal, so he's he's going to lose his max HP. But this guy has has a chance to stop the four damage. He'll roll. He rolled a one. So he prevents one damage and loses armor equal to the difference, putting him at zero. And then he's going to go ahead and take that damage as well. But it prevents this character from dying, which is very, very useful. If he had rolled a, instead of a one through a three, a four to six, it would do five damage to this hero. And that would be that. So this is actually mm, probably even maybe a little worse. <laughs> now that that instant is done, he will have an opportunity to roll for his abilities. This character is interesting. He is basically a support character of types. Uh, when when, you're tar when when you target an ability die with Destiny, which is uh, basically his ability, uh, select a core ability. Basically what's gonna happen is he actually can change the color, the, the number of, on die, but we won't worry about that right now. So let's go ahead and we can heal all other heroes uh, for fate HP and refresh your assist at the end of turn, uh, or I can have him gain plus one fate and steal an HP from the enemy. We'll actually go ahead and do the... Mm, that's an interesting one, though. Interesting choices here. Now, uh, this says you roll a d6 and add it to the hero's value. Okay, that's a pretty useful one there. Let us do this. So we'll go ahead and do... We can... It's hard to select. These are hard choices. So four. So we, you gain one fate. So we'll move it to, to, to two. And then you steal an HP from the enemy. So this guy's actually going to start taking damage now. He's going to go from zero to one damage. Well done. That's pretty much all this guy did. Uh, he could, if he wanted to use these things here to reroll those die, or he can change a pip from that two to a three if he wanted, but he's not going to do that. He'll save it for later. Uh, after that, he's going to assign the abilities. He did that. The boss's turn. He doesn't have a boss. Doesn't have the turn because he used an instant instead. That'll end the turn, and then we'll start the next turn with this character here, our big damage dealer. He basically, whenever he takes two damage from himself, he actually is going to gain bonus die. And he can choose to use bonus die to do additional damage. So let's go ahead and see what happens. We'll go ahead and uh, see if there's an instance. There's not. And then there's an ability roll. He does three damage and still to the hero and the heroes on the left, which is all of them. Wow, that's not very good. Roll, roll, roll. Oh, no, we dropped one. That's okay. We'll use a different one. Okay, four and four. Uh, it says deal yourself two damage, then gain, and then be able to do four damage. So if he wants to do that, he can. He can do that twice. He's going to go up two because he dealt four damage to himself. Ouch. And then he can do eight damage to the boss, pushing him all the way up to nine. Not so bad. Because what happens is, at a certain point, you're going to get bonus die, and it's going to be based on whenever you take the boss's HP down. Other things he could choose to do is steal HP and, and then gain that HP plus an additional one if he has no bonus die. Or he could choose to, if he has seven, that you can deal yourself two damage and then heal adjacent heroes for HP equal to your total die that you spent. Not, not so shabby either. Um, but anyway, he chose to use those two abilities and he gained his bonus die from maybe next round. And then we're going to go ahead and do the boss's turn, which is three damage is dealt to this hero and heroes on their left. Oh, actually, it's not so bad. It's this hero. He takes the three, which puts him at one. And then all heroes on the left are going to be dealt three as well, which actually wouldn't be this character here. One, two, three. It would be this character. And it's based on the position, not on where your turn order is. So this character here takes three damage. Everybody on the left takes three, which would be this guy here, putting him to zero HP. Is there anything we can do? And we can go ahead and check and see. We can use Destiny. It says roll a D6 and add it to any hero's HP value. I think we're going to do that to save, her, save him. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Roll a D6, add that value, which is a five to anybody's HP value. And then it says, if you uh, value, if you roll less than your position, gain plus one fate. Well, I'm in position one and I rolled higher. And then deal fate damage or heal your target for fate HP. Uh, yeah, we're going to do the heal. We definitely want to do the heal. And then he's going to take his three damage after that. So these abilities can be used pretty much whenever you want, but when you turn your character sideways, that's it. You can't use it till the next round. So utilizing these abilities is very, very important. Okay, so now we'll do the final turn here, which is going to be this judge dude here. I'm going to go back to the end of turn, start of turn, flipping over this thing here. All right, that one says it's a boss turn, so we're ignoring instance, and he's going to get his ability roll. And this says it's does, it does three damage, and it's dealt to this hero and heroes on the right. So it'd be these two characters here, and he probably is going to be okay. So he's going to go ahead and roll for his ability. Yeah, five and a three. He can heal himself and the heroes adjacent to him for two HP. That's a pretty decent heal right there. And that would mean he would heal the red guy and the green guy here. 
Uh, I think he'll do that. He's going to go ahead and spend this, this token here, which will give his pip turning into a four. And so he'll be able to do that twice. He can heal himself and Jason Heroes for two. So it'll be four. So he's going to heal this character for four. One, two, three, and four. This character here will go one, two, three, and overheal for four. And additionally, heal himself, and he doesn't need to do that. And I think this guy, whenever he overheals, he gains defiance. So he overhealed two characters, and that's going to push him up in defiance. And that will that will finish his turn off. He's then going to do take three damage from the boss. One, two, and three. And then everybody to his, uh, his right is going to take three damage. That'll be this guy. One, two, and three. And that will basically end the round. Uh, all that I forgot to note is this guy here, he had armor. And so did this guy here. So in which case you ignore the damage taken and remove the armor. So that's pretty useful as far as how armor works. So that, that, that goes like that. Then basically what's going to happen is the end of round is going to hit. Then we're going to go to round of round start. These cards are all going to go into the discard pile over here. And these guys are all going to get turned just like that. And then these cards are all going to come out face down once again. And you're going to keep keep going just from that. Now, obviously, your objective is to not just heal yourselves and keep yourselves from dying, but also to get this guy down. Like I said, if he were to take one more damage, he would go up to 10, pushing that die out. This the die could then be given to another player, and this would go down. And then he'd be able to use more, multiple die. He'd move this ability die up, and so on and so forth, from 20, 30, 40, 50, and uh, 60, in which case he hits that soft enrage, where you're going to be taking out the... The, the easies and putting in these hard cards that do a lot more damage into this deck here along with any face down ones as well shuffling them up dealing them back out again and then moving on to finally find out you get to fight this last stand card so i'll go ahead and just show you one of them here's one after you've defeated the boss if he's if you still have less than three characters down he's going to try and deal damage to all heroes equal to the number of unresolved boss cards then choose one of them and resolve it so if there was four of them that were unresolved, or three of them, I should say, everybody takes three damage, and then one of these cards gets flipped over, and that takes effect as well. As long as you don't die to all of that, you win this boss, and you win the game Raid Boss. Pretty, pretty simple as how it works. Just make sure you follow along with this little turn tracker here. And don't forget there's special things like, for instance, this guy here makes, he does plus one weak to the character in this position. So when he takes damage, he takes one more. So don't forget about passive abilities like that. It's pretty easy to forget about things like that because there's a lot, there's a lot of moving parts in the game. But if, as long as you have one character, one player for each character, it's not going to be too difficult to, uh, to get right. And when I played a two-player game, after playing it a couple times at four, uh, you could play a two-player game with two characters, and it's not so bad. Now, me trying to show you all four is going to have probably some flaws and whatnot, but I think you get the idea of the game. Raid Boss. All right, let's come up and talk about it. Okay, so let's talk about Raid Boss now. And I think I pretty much covered most of the stuff, other than the fact that I probably missed some moving parts here and there. And uh, that's going to happen when you're trying to show off a four-player game to uh, you guys out there in La La Land. So hopefully I did a good enough job to where you understand how it functions. Let's talk about a couple bosses first before we go ahead and uh, explain what I think about the game. Uh, like Tyr over here. Tyr basically says that he's going to have this fate track over here. He has three phases in which he switches out easy to medium, medium to hard. And... Uh, also, at the end of each of the cards he's using, they're basically fate trials. You can gain fate or lose fate. If you lose fate after you go below zero, something bad happens to you, you take damage. If you go up on fate, you can actually gain HP. So he'll help you or hurt you depending on how well you do on the trials. Or then you have Akiri. This is a poisoner. And Akiri basically will make poison heroes take a damage at the end of their turn. And the only way you can remove poison is by getting antidotes or by overhealing yourself. And then the fates, these guys have this thing called trance, and there's a little marker over here. And it does six damage to the current hero, and then it reduces trance by one to a minimum of two. At the start of the next turn, you set trance to zero, and you keep going. So it's basically, this, they get harder and harder and harder as the game progresses. There's a lot of different things that these the, the different bosses do, and that's not even including all the cards that are going to be utilized for them. So in some cases, like, tier is very different in the way he does his... his uh, Let's see when his trials set the heroes. Uh, so this hero ends the turn at max HP. So if he does that, he's going to gain two favor. And if he fails, all heroes lose one max HP. Not only that, though, but at the very beginning of the turn, your hero's HP is set to one. Oof. So there is some craziness going on with that. There's also, I don't know other heroes. Like I talked to you about before, some of them like to hurt themselves to do damage to the boss, in which case they can also heal other players. You have the tanky dude who's giving out shields everywhere. He's moving positions to get shields, and he's also doing damage based on his armor value. 
all of these guys are going to make you in some way lose these the set skill points you have in order to use their abilities they all have special abilities that can either heal or do some kind of assist or a movement as well as doing a sub a substantial amount of damage and then you guys have guys here that like basically will gain charges based on odd and even numbers they like to watch die uh, characters like this one here where if damage would kill you make a chest a cheat death roll and then minus two vanish if no ones are rolled you take zero damage so he likes to live quite a bit there's a ton of different characters they all function different ways and there is a certain uh, group of party members you can play with but really you can choose to play with any of them that you so want to and most of them have some kind of way to survive death at least to an extent to where you will survive three from three chaos if you're smart enough to do so uh, each boss unlocks bonus die making the more you play the longer you play the game the more things you can do and it's kind of a nice teaching method as well you only start with two die and then you assign them but as the game progresses more things start happening more th complications start going on there's more moving parts but it is in a nice flow and it teaches you throughout all the artwork in the game is excellent i really really enjoyed the artwork of the game it reminds me of world of warcraft a game i played for many 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 years and the fact that you're fighting a boss in a raid boss scenario this does that it takes away all the fluff of a normal uh, descent type of a game those dungeon crawls where you're sitting there going i don't really want to go through eight dungeons and just roll dice into the fight i want to fight the final boss this is what does that for you you instantly fight the final boss and you're in it you can actually get hit out you can die the first turn of the of the game on the first hero if you're not smart if you don't use your hero, hero abilities wisely there is a lot of craziness that can happen and that's what's fun about it there's also a ton of like miraculous saving throws that happen in the game. Uh, I love it when I flip over this thing, I'm like, okay, I have to roll one through six. As long as I roll a four or higher, that's great. And there's a lot of chance as far as the dies and how they roll, but you can manipulate your die. And characters sometimes like rolling different numbers. And if you don't like the, uh, I want a six every time, there's characters that don't function like that, which is cool as well. Heroes are always going to be of use to you on every single turn. And most of the time you can mitigate the boss's damage or at least do more damage than the boss does to try and even out the score we lost the first game and then we had two heroes KO'd the second and then the third game we only had one hero KO'd and that's pretty cool as well I guess if you want to play at the hard mode you could actually start the hero the boss's HP at 120 and go down because then you're gonna actually gain uh, less die you just have to also set the hard mode and whatnot as well but uh, otherwise you just play the game normally it's already challenging as it is so Component quality, excellent. I'd like to see individual unique die to all the characters. I think that'd be cool, but I know that that can be very expensive. But that's something I'd personally like to see, and maybe a couple sets of die for each of the different characters to kind of use in their own way. Uh, all of the movement works pretty well. I didn't realize how to actually move the positions from one to two and three to three to four or whatever. You actually take the whole board and, and, and move it and then push, which is cool. I just didn't get that for some reason to start the game off. We learned it after the second game. But for the most part, we understood the game. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts in this game, which is kind of weird that you want to play a four player game over a two player game for the first game, but you really would because there's less things you have to remember. And somebody who's played it before is gonna be very helpful as far as how the boss works and the cards and how they pop out. It's not complex, but there's a lot of things going on, which you can t tend to forget, especially with your abilities that you're using and all that. So just some minor things that I don't know how you would go about fixing it, but they kind of perturbed me as I was going throughout the game. Overall though, I had a really good time with this game. I really, really enjoyed fighting the bosses. I like the fact that all the bosses are very unique in their own right, and all the teams that you make up are very different in how you want to utilize their abilities and how you want to fight the bosses. I would always recommend a tank and a healer. I think it's a very good idea, especially as a World of Warcraft fan, but that choice is up to you. If you guys like this game, I want to take a look. It's currently on Kickstarter. This game deserves to be funded. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, pick it up. It's fun raid boss take a look down below in the description if you want to go ahead and see the game for yourself and decide whether it's not whether that's worth backing for you all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review if you like this video check it out raid boss on kickstarter also apparently there is a raid boss hard mode that's not the unfiltered gamer way where you just do it backwards you fight the boss halfway through and you'll actually be able to you gain bonus die and you just kind of get into the mode harder you can do it that way i guess that'd be even more difficult but there you go for those of you who want a bigger challenge as well as taking a look at our website unfilteredgamer.com tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more our live stream every wednesday 7 30 p.m pst our friends everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek all right guys i'm burnt out i'm tired it's time to go you want to fight the raid boss do it next time a raid boss